Um, who's got a question? Yes. My little South Carolina bitch. God's good. Um, I, whenever I first started watching FMA, um, my parents wanted to know what is the show that my daughter's so in love with, and um, they started looking into it. And for a long time, I wasn't a lot allowed to watch because I grew up in a Christian home and they didn't like the symbols and stuff. So I was wondering what you would say to parents who felt that way about it. What an awesome question! Holy heck! <laughs> <laughs> way, to, way to start the panel. Oh. That's heavy. Can we go heavy for a minute? Is that okay with you guys? Yeah. I'd like to be able to go heavy. Um, I love this kind of question. Uh, most of you that know anything about me know that, I, that my faith is very important to me. Uh, it is the foundation of my life. I do my best to make decisions that I believe to, to the best of my ability will honor God. Um, having said that, my, my profession is an actor. Actors play characters. I have gotten so many emails from people that say, uh, I heard you're a Christian. How can you play an atheist like Edward Elric? Oh, it's called acting. <laughs> I'm not Ed. I don't. I don't believe what he believes. But I mean, how many jobs would actors have if they only played characters that were just like them? And incidentally, then it's not acting. <laughs> it's just you, right? It's just you. Um, here's what I. Here's what I think about that. Um, first of all. It's animation. I mean, come on, it's a cartoon. At the end of the day, it's for entertainment. And I would like to encourage everyone in here, do not base your life decisions or your faith or your beliefs on a cartoon. <laughs> not, a good, not a good idea. I know, as fun as it may be, <laughs> for a while. You know, I mean, I get emails with me, have you ever tried alchemy? No. <laughs> no, I haven't really, and I'm kind of afraid to. But, um, <laughs> my work. No, um, but you know what I mean? And parents, you know what? What I would say to your parents is instill, instill the right values in your child. You take the time to, to train up. What's the scripture say? The Bible says, train up a child in the way that he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Notice the Bible doesn't say, allow Cartoon Network to train up a child in the way that he should go. <laughs> Parents have an awesome responsibility, and that is to instill values and, and good judgment into your kids. Don't let cartoons and movies and music, don't let them do it. It's not their job, and it's not a, a really wise way to go anyway. But that's the first thing I would say. If they have instilled in you a, a good mind and and conscientious thought and wisdom and, and, uh, and discernment let you be you and trust God to, to show you what is right for you, you know? Um, and it's just entertainment. It's not meant to be any more than entertainment, you know? I mean, when George Lucas made Star Wars he didn't really expect for people to, you know, build Star Destroyers to go out and find Darth Vader. <laughs> it, it was just entertainment. It wasn't meant to be taken as any more than that. And I, you guys, I can tell you some scary stories. I know my girl up here. I, I'll tell you something you'll get a kick out of. When I, I used to lead worship at my church. I used to lead the band, play the piano, and be out in front and lead in the music at my church for a decade. And it was something very, 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 very dear to me. It was, I felt like I was using a gift that, that God had given me for, for a very specific purpose. And some people in my church uh, started going on the internet, and uh, some of the church leaders, and found out about Full Metal Alchemist, and about this ornery little rebellious kid named Edward Elric. And they literally called me, and I've never told this story before. They called me in and they said, how can you play this? character who's like rebellious against authority and clearly not, a, you know, antagonistic and atheist and whatever. And I tried my best to explain it to him. And uh, some people just don't get that. And consequently, I was uh, not able to lead worship anymore. Aww. Aww. Um, I was... Sorry. <laughs> My point is, some people don't understand. They, they, they have a difficult time 
uh, what's the word? Not prioritizing, but um, putting things in their proper perspective. Compartmentalize. Compartmentalize. You know, the same thing happened with Star Wars. I remember 20 years ago, Jake, do you remember when Star Wars came out? And there were so many oh, yeah. Christian organizations that were like, this is a blasphemy, the force. And, and how dare, you know, he, you know, belittle God by making him the force. It's like, dude, it's a movie. It's just for entertainment. Have fun and then walk away and live your life based on real things. And, and people, some people just don't get that. And, uh, and they never will. But I, I, I am so grateful to God for the opportunities in my life. I give him complete credit for the opportunities and the open doors that have been given to me. I never expected them. I never, I never uh, beat on doors. And, you know, and I, they just were opportunities I was given. And I always promised him that I would make sure and give him credit for those opportunities. And so I do my best to, um, in, 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 to, to let people know, especially people from Christian families and Christian homes, uh, try, to, try to share some kind of an insight on that, um, my perspective on it. I mean, I played per Kurtz Weber from Full Metal Panic is a pervert. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, how could you swear like that? I didn't swear. Kurtz Weber swore, right? I mean, anybody who's around me knows I don't, I don't act like that. That's not me. And, you know, like, well, Edward Elric says, you know, swear words. I'm not, I'm playing the character. That wasn't me talking like that, you know? So some people um, have a hard time. Have you guys ever seen some of the funny, uh, funny bits where, and we're in the perfect venue for it, perfect venue for it. I was, you guys, I have to tell you this funny story. I was at a con. 20 years ago, before I even started voice acting, I was a fan at a big sci-fi con. And uh, Jonathan Frakes was the, was the, was the, uh, the guest of honor, right? So we're sitting in this huge room like this, and he's doing a Q&A, much like I'm doing right now. And everybody's raising their hands in a very, you know, orderly, mature way, and there's one guy walking back and forth in front of the crowd, looking at Fritz. <laughs> <laughs> trying to get him to call on it. The guy finally calls, uh, Jonathan Frakes finally calls on this guy, and he's like, <clears throat> um, Commander Riker, in the episode where you and Picard captured Picard, I might add, were blah blah blah, what was your, what was your thought of that, Commander? And Frakes is up there going, <laughs> uh, trying his best to be kind of, everyone in the crowd's kind of laughing, you know what I mean? And then the guy hears people laughing and he turns around to the crowd and goes, That's Commander Riker! That's Commander Riker up there! He was so into it. And and there's sometimes, you know, sometimes people like have the most difficult time delineating this is fun and entertainment and we love it. But then there's the real guy, Jonathan Frakes or William Shatner, you know? And I got to meet William Shatner yesterday for the first time in my life. <laughs> I just broke my own rule. I thought I was Captain Kirk. When I was a little kid, I made uniforms and made home Star Trek movies in the backyard. And I like, got my friends in the neighborhood to be Spock and Klingons and everything. Yes. I loved it. I, I thought I was. I lived for Star Trek. And Shatner is the only one of the original cast that I've never met. In fact, I've done a lot of conventions as a guest with people like George Takei and Walter Koenig and uh, Michelle Nichols. And, and it was, and, and I just wanted to meet the man. And it was so neat to meet him, just to kind of, there he is, that's the guy that played that character that I loved so much. But that whole idea of perspective and understanding where the line is, I think would, would, is really a good thing to figure that out. And not for you guys, you're all cool, but you know what I mean. 